So here we have a project with multiple issues for us to view and play around with. But different teams may want to visualize their work in different ways. For example, let's take a marketing team. Maybe you want to orient yourself around a calendar, whereas a stakeholder might put a little bit more value in a timeline view. The great news is that JIRA is flexible enough to help all team members visualize work in ways that make sense for them. In JIRA, the default view is the board view, which displays a selection of issues and columns, with each column representing a step in your team's workflow. This view provides your team with a shared view of all work that hasn't started, work that is in progress, and work that has been completed. You'll be able to easily drag and drop issues as your work goes through workflows. Then you have your timeline view, which allows you to plan work, track progress, and map dependencies within a single team and project. The timeline organizes work by epics, and a quick reminder here that epics are issue types that represent larger bodies of work and are often represented as a collection of multiple issues. Here, you can easily show the relationship between epics and child issues by mapping dependencies directly from them on the timeline. I do want to pause here and talk a little bit more about dependencies. These dependencies, or issue links, help map the order in which issues need to be done. For example, a dependency between two issues may indicate there is a potential blocker and the team needs to address this. A potential blocker is usually indicated by the issue link being in red. You can also adjust dates and durations directly in the timeline view, and you can even change the view on the bottom right from weeks to months to quarters. Some of you may want to share this view with leaders and stakeholders. No worries, you can always export it. If you enjoy being able to visualize work in a spreadsheet style format, you're going to really like the list view. The list view is different than the issue view we saw earlier because this list view is for this project where the issue view we saw earlier is a global view of all issues. Here, you can open up issues to find other issue types within the project. You can also use filters to better visualize work and get the information you need, like filtering it by assignee or due date. The list view also allows you to change information on issues without clicking into the issue itself. You're able to make changes and update those issues directly in line. Now the board, timeline, and list views are, all av are available in all projects, but the backlog is unique to the Scrum template which is designed for teams that deliver work on a regular cadence in short time box periods called sprints. The backlog is home to all of your team's potential work for the project. It increases transparency by letting everyone know what's being worked on now and what's being worked on next. Here is where you can create or edit multiple sprints should you need to. You can define the start and end dates, uh, you can determine what needs to get done in each by maybe selecting a goal that you have for the sprint. You can also drag and drop issues from the backlog into that appropriate sprint. And one thing that's really cool is that when you start a sprint, only the issues that are in that active sprint will be on your board. This way, your team can focus only on the work that needs to get done. We can see here that Mobile Sprint 2 is currently in progress. So if you go back to that board, you'll be able to see that is also on your board. Now let's pivot from a software project to a business project to see some views that are only available in business projects, like the summary view. The summary view gives you an insight into various parts of your project as well as your project's overall health. This is going to be super useful for team leads and stakeholders who just want an overview of what's going on in a project. You can see team workload related projects to this current project. And then there's also the calendar view, which is another view exclusive to business projects. And just as you imagine, the calendar view allows your team to see when tasks are due and quickly glance at what next weeks, months, and quarters. Like the list view, you can also filter by a variety of fields. Click on the unscheduled tab to see tasks that are without due dates. Let's find some work that needs to be prioritized. And then we can go ahead and drag and drop them directly into the calendar. What is so great about the calendar view is that you can see dates across different teams and projects. 
For example, imagine you're a marketer looking to launch a new campaign and you want to understand which features you should showcase. Well, rather than asking various product teams for their expected launch dates, you can simply add projects from the product team to your calendar and see what they're shipping and when. 